James Lennis, James the wine guy. Right now, James the coffee guy. What we have before us is virtual coffee. Actually, very close to where I live. This is called Heliana Georgialis. Ethiopian coffee, which, uh, you know, I've reviewed many Ethiopian coffees and I uh, just absolutely adore this uh, coffee nation um, producing state. So back panel for inspection here. So beautiful packaging. So beautiful packaging outside, as I like to say, beautiful contents inside. So stay tuned for this review. So, you know, I used to be a food and wine marketing manager at a national retailer, and uh, for me, it was a really great way of understanding, you know, the products that came to that particular, um, you know, retailer, that particular establishment. And in doing so, you have to go through and say, for example, cuppings. I would taste 60 cuppings at a time. And, um, you know, I, it was very interesting. I was there with uh, one of the people at the tasting, and what they could not handle was the cupping. It was, you know, you drink black, right? And that's the only way to, you know, evaluate the coffee. Now, you can't do that with 60 cups of coffee. Just impossible. But what you do is just a little bit of a taste goes a long way to get that understanding of that coffee. That is if you are a coffee lover, right? If you're not a coffee lover, it's a really hard thing to do. Uh, but for me, I think this is, you know, obviously the birthplace of coffee. There's something unique in the signature and the soil. This is the coffee, um, you know, nation that I go to all the time, at least from producers, uh, not just in the U.S., but around the world, where Ethiopian coffees are utilized. The beans are utilized in, uh, you know, the final product. And for me, it is my, uh, you know, just way of getting back to grounding. It's my way of comfort. It's my way of ex exhilaration to start the morning. And, uh, you know, I definitely have coffee throughout the day as well. Not a lot of it, but I definitely have some of it. So first, scent characterization, flavor profile, and the point score. I drink black only on these cuppings, but generally I will put uh, either cream or non-fat milk because, um, you know, that's just the way I prefer my coffee. It does, it's not a value judgment. It's not good or bad. Uh, some people say it's bad, but I, I definitely prefer just a little bit of cream or milk. So, scent characterization. This is really beautiful. I use a Chemex to uh, get that uh, perfected cup of coffee, and it's really never let me down at any point. So, beautiful characterization of rose petals, watermelon, a bit of cedar, cinnamon, and additional notes of uh, moist stones. Moist stones, those um, stones where they're wet, it's in the sunlight, and the evaporation point happens, and it's that beautiful scent that comes from the you know, minerality of the stones and uh, that evaporative point. It's absolutely beautiful. Next is the flavor characterization, then the point score. Very acidic, very acid forward, bright acids, beautiful. And uh, so that's why people, because if you're very sensitive to acid, you might, uh, you know, tone that down with some milk, and that's why people do that. Um, it actually is a good pairing, um, the, the protein to the acid. It's a fantastic way of, you know, that's why people have, uh, say, for example, cheese and wine, the acid to the protein. Beautiful flavor characteristics on this coffee include orange marmalade, chocolate, rose petal mineral, and graphite. This coffee is a 9.4 out of a 10.0 scale. Think of that as 94 points out of 100 points. Do me a favor before you leave. Give a like to this video, share this video, subscribe to this channel, and thank you for watching this video today. Stay tuned for more. Salud. And let's also connect on a variety of social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, LinkedIn, as well as Instagram and WordPress. Thank you.